This is a procedural video for Bio 302L Genetics Lab. This video covers the procedure for the Nukem Lab. This covers the basic procedure for the lab and ends with a very nice uh, flowchart of the procedure, which I strongly urge you to copy down and put in your lab notebook and bring to lab and follow that as your procedure instead of opening up your lab manual and using that to carry out the procedure. It will help you and make it much easier to do the experiment. So the experiment starts with you uh, obtaining some bacteria to work with. We will be using E. coli B. That's the strain name B. It will probably come in a small disposable glass tube with a cap that we keep so when you when you're done with this you'll toss the glass tube with the E. coli in it in an autoclave bag but the cap will tell you where to put it to go in a container where we recycle them and use them again after cleaning them. You're going to start by obtaining uh, in addition to the E. coli a couple plates to grow the E. coli on. E. coli will grow in liquid media that's the way you'll get it in the tube but also on solid media and so these plates are filled with TBAB uh, agar and that's a very rich media the bacteria will very happily grow on the TBAB um, and so what you're going to do is you're going to get two of them make sure you label them correctly that's uh, small letters around the periphery with your name and the date and what you're putting on it E. coli B you should watch the video of how to spread a plate aseptically that's on uh, on blackboard and um, you're going to add 100 microliters of your E. coli B to both of these plates flip them upside down and put them in the incubator at 37 degrees for a minimum of two hours two hours is the minimum you can certainly leave it in there longer two and a half hours three hours four hours if you wanted to but two hours is the minimum not the maximum the longer you let them grow the better you'll just end up with more micro colonies and in fact a better result. Uh, less than two hours you're going to get uh, a smaller and smaller result and uh, that's a bad thing. So during that two hour incubation what you're going to do is set up a different part of this experiment. This is actually the experimental part of the Newcomb experiment. This is where you're going to look at whether or not the mutation conferring resistance to T2 is spontaneous or whether it is induced by the presence of the T2. But since we also want to know how often that mutation is occurring, we need to know how many cells are in this tube because we're going to compare that to how many mutants do we see. Well, there's a lot of cells in here, so we can't just take a sample of it and plate it because what will happen is it will just completely overgrow the plate. We need to dilute those cells down. And so the way we're going to do that is we're going to use a few tubes and we're going to do a serial dilution. So using aseptic ne technique, get three microcentrifuge tubes. Make sure you pour them out of the bucket. Don't reach into the bucket those microcentrifuge tubes should then be filled with 990 microliters of sterile dilution media each. Of course you can use a P1000 set to 990 to fill each of these tubes. For this you can use uh, the same tip each time since you're moving sterile media into sterile tubes. But do be sure to work aseptically. I like to label these tubes um, negative 2, negative 4, and negative 6 because when we do the serial dilution what's going to happen is this will be the one that is uh, diluted 1 to 100 or 10 to the negative 2. This one will be down to 10 to the negative 4 or 1 to 10,000 and this one will be down to 1 to a million or 10 to the negative 6. So these are the exponents. Nice, simple, and easy, and very easy to keep track of which dilution you're looking at. It takes up a lot less space than having the 10 there. So once you have B1000 
these tubes ready, we'll go ahead and do the serial dilution while we're waiting for the incubation. And so take 10 microliters of this very same E. coli that you're doing the experiment with and add it to this first tube that you have labeled 10 to the negative 2. So you've added 10 microliters to 990 microliters. That's a 1 to 100 dilution. You should do the dilution problems in the lab manual. You should look at the video for how to solve those dilution problems if you're having any trouble, and that'll help you. So that's a 1 to 100 dilution. After you add the 10 microliters to the 990, make sure you close the lid and vortex just for a few seconds, but make sure you vortex this to mix uh, this sample nicely. Once you do that, you've diluted your sample 1 to 100. You're then going to take 10 microliters from this tube using a fresh tip and transfer it to this tube, the one that you have labeled 10 to the negative 4. Make sure you use good aseptic technique. You should be working near a flame. Make sure you pipette correctly. When you uh, aspirate, when you reach in with the pipette, you only push to the first stop. You um, release with your thumb slowly so you don't get any air bubbles. When you are dispensing, you push down all the way to that second stop. Keep your thumb down until you pull out with the tip so that you don't suck any of it back up. After you've added this 10 microliters into this tube, close the lid, vortex. Now you have a 1 to 100 dilution and a 1 to 10,000 dilution using a brand new sterile tip. You'll take 10 microliters of this after vortexing it and transfer it to the 10 to the negative 6 tube and then vortex this. And so now you'll have all three dilutions. This is the one that we want because our sample was probably up in the 10 to the 9th range. So we're going to have to dilute it about a million fold to be able to see countable colonies on a plate. We need something in the 1 to 300 range to be able to count them. If we have more than three, 400 colonies, they become too condensed too squished together and we can't count them very easily. Once you get over 500 it's very hard to count colonies on a plate. So we really want to try and get it down to a countable range. So this should give us good data. So what we'll do is now that we have a mill of 1 to 1 million diluted cells, we'll get two more TBAB plates, label them, make sure you label the bottom of the plates, Label them E. coli B, diluted 10 to the negative 6th. You can label it A and B, or 1 and 2, because there are two of them. And then to each of them, you'll add 100 microliters of this sample. And then spread them correctly, as per the procedure of how to spread a plate. These will be incubated overnight at 37 degrees so that you can count colonies. You can then use the concentration of the number of colonies to determine the concentration in this tube to work back and get the concentration in this tube. Once you're done that, perhaps you've used up this two hours, perhaps you haven't and you have to hang out for a little bit or maybe go get a drink. But at the end of at least two hours, what you're going to do is complete this experiment, the Nukem experiment. After two hours, you take these plates out of the incubator, and one of them you're going to leave alone for a moment. But the other one, you're going to grab a fresh spreader and a little bit of the dilution media, the same sterile dilution media you used here, Put a little tiny bit, say 100 microliters, on the, on the plate, and just to lubricate the plate, and re-spread the plate, just as if you had put more cells on the plate. And what you're going to do is break up all 
the micro colonies that it started forming, all the little piles of cells. It's going to spread them all around. It's not adding cells. It's not taking cells away. It's just moving them all around on the plate. You're only doing it to one of the plates, though, not the other one. Make sure you label which one is which. Now you have a respread plate and a non-respread plate. Throw away that spreader because we're using disposable spreaders. And at that point, you can infect both of these plates with your uh, T2 phage. We're going to do that by adding uh, a little bit of phage in a tube, adding some top auger to that, pouring it on the plate. We'll show you how to do that in lab. It's very easy. Letting that top auger solidify for about five minutes. The key there is when you add top auger to a plate, don't touch the plate for five minutes, maybe ten minutes after you pour the top auger on the plate. Don't move it. Don't look at it. Don't check it. Don't even think about moving the plate. Just let it be. Go do something else for five minutes, at least five minutes. And after that, it'll be fine. But if you touch it while it's um, while, right after you poured it, uh, you'll get waves or it won't cover the plate. But you, you got to pour the top auger, you got to swirl it to cover the entire plate, and then you got to leave it alone. Once the top auger is solidified, stack all of your plates together so you can have a stack of four and incubate it overnight. And then you're going to count your colonies and see what you find. So that's the procedure for the Nukem experiment. Here is your um, flowchart. Very simple, very nice. One page tells you how to do the entire experiment with uh, very little writing, very few words. I hope your experiment turns out very well.